Ah, so, happy Thursday, YouTube. Happy Thursday to my guests, Koki Pirates. Hello, it is indeed Thursday. It is not, but it is. <laughs> Fratis? May London burn, but good day. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you off as long as you agree that it is indeed Thursday. Um, maybe? Uh, th Thursday is a state of mind. And Queenie? That, I, I guess. There you are. We are agreed that Thursday is indeed a state of mind. Oh. So. Ha! Huh, final topic of the week. Um, which it kind of, uh, it's, 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 it's interwoven into a big ball of fucktardery that we have in the UK right now. Well, it's not really new, but it's, um, in the run up to, um, the elections we're going to have here in Europe, and I'm sure they're not unconnected. Um, what should have been a storm in a teacup started with the Daily Mail, or the Daily Fail as we like to call it, making some big fucking fuss about a branch of Subway. Uh, oh, I can't even remember where in the UK it was. Somewhere in England. Um, you know, no, uh, taking ham off the menu, only serving halal meat. It was phrased as uh, the, uh, the demands of Muslims. In fact, as I understand it, it's more of the demand of the Muslim community, of which there are a lot. In other words, it's a supply and demand situation reflecting the place where this subway is. But, of course, um, this gets leapt on, and it's supposed to, you know, suddenly sandwiches are a reason. You know, vote UKIP because sandwiches. Um, that, that, that basically, yeah, that basically is it. But then you've got, oh, the halal meat in pizzas and the halal meat in supermarkets, and is it all well-labeled enough because... Because we should really give a shit. Because, like, a few years ago, the BNP were going around telling people the British Navy only served halal meat, which is just a lie. It's the stupidest lie, uh, as if you're going to go, oh, oh, I'm going to become a racist then. Thanks for telling me that. Um, the animals are always stunned, uh, stunned, stunned, stunned beforehand. They have to be. We have European laws about how animals are treated. Um, this type of media are very selective about when they give a shit about how animals are treated. Um, and interestingly enough, turkeys are always killed in this way. Um, it's the, the slitting of the throat. So what do Christians eat every Christmas? What, what is technically a halal turkey? There's no such thing as a haram turkey. But anyway, um, I, I'm quite pleased with my, my summation, actually. Vote UKIP because sandwiches. Um... Koki, your, your thoughts on this? My thoughts are this is a perfect example of creeping Sharia. <laughs> yes, that meme it has to come back. Um, I, I don't know about like the taste or quality. Well, either way, these are mostly shops in heavily Muslim communities. So, you know, mm. even that's not a case to be made. Uh, I guess the, the small minority of non-Muslims can't get ham at Subway, maybe. Mm. Um, it, it really is silly, though. I don't understand how halal would affect the quality of, like, every time you buy some chicken or beef or whatever, you don't ask how the cow was killed. It, it mm. really shouldn't bother anyone. Uh, no, not at all. It, it's asinine. It's it's, I think for some people it's an excuse, and I think for some people, I, I, for, certainly from the point of view of parts of the media, um, and if you're UKIP and you want votes, uh, then it's, um, you can get people angry and scared if they feel that this really is the Islamification of, maybe at some point somebody really wanted a ham sandwich particularly, and they went to a subway that didn't often get that demand and it stopped being profitable to, to, to stock it, uh, that the story does, as in, insofar as there is a story, get bigger than that. I will point out, when I first saw this story, my, my first thought was some bullshit that the Daily Fail had reported regarding a swimming pool a couple of years ago. And pretty much, when ex uh, inspected and examined, 
pretty much every element of this swimming pool story turned out to be nonsense. If not twisted, then exaggerated, or indeed just completely made up to the point of view, uh, to the point where, guess what, shock horror, the Daily Mail story, there was no story. Ah, now, Francis, I, I think you're, you're chomping at the bit over this one, aren't you? Um, it's just a terrible... So, I mean, um, I, I'm going to say it this way. Before I started researching this story, I was uh, somewhere on the fence about halal slaughtering. I, 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 didn't, I thought it very barbaric, very old-time, not very effective. Um, and then I started to research this, and, and I ran across a few very good articles and a few very good science papers... And I read through all of it, and my opinion is switch 180 um, percent. Uh-huh. And I'd like to quickly talk about a little bit of the science and, and, the, and the thing behind it. Um, you already said that halal slaughtering for, for certain types of animals is normal. Um, mm. But the thing about halal slaughtering compared to uh, what we usually slaughter them is, like with chickens and turkeys, uh, if you take buy normal non-halal uh, turkeys, um, and this also goes for Jewish. Uh, Shichita, I think it's called, uh, meat. Uh-huh. Um, oh, right. But, but basically, Kabbalah meat. Um, Kabbalah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okayed meat. Um, a chicken will uh, get taken, get put into this little, uh, like, runway thing where it can't get out or can't move, and then it'll be dunked in water and electrocuted till it's stunned. Uh, mm. That's how we normally slaughter chickens. Um, also small sheep, cows, and lots of other small animals. With bigger ones, we do something what's just called bolting, which is we take a big bolt and smack it through the back of their skull. Um, by the way, this is not very effective. Um, if we take one where, where it penetrates the skull, uh, still in 6% of the times, it completely fails. The animal is not stunned, and when we slaughter it, it is in great pain. Right. Um, if we take a non-penetrating bolt, it's one in three animals. Right, and this is all non-halal slaughtering. We've not got halal slaughtering. Um, halal slaughtering tends to work with less stunning, um, but with modern methods of halal slaughtering, which all three plants in the U.S., which are the biggest plants in the world, um, mm. have, um, the thing goes down. Um, and and the best way to measure this is a type of um, hormone which you have in the blood and in the bones and body if, if you have stress which is called uh what was it called cortisol, cortisol. Uh, it's called cortisol and uh, the best way to measure basically stress levels after death is to see how much cortisol you have in the uh, tissue um mm. and with non-halal basically haram slaughter it's 123 uh, nano mole per uh, milliliter and with halal it's 41 and just that number says a lot about the slaughtering. So it might, in the first sense, seem very brutal and very bad, but all in all, it's not. Um, plus, I mean, this is not the first uh, large scandal we've had in the last, let's say, five years about animal yeah. slaughtering. Like, uh, from 2009 to 2011, Animal Aid, a, a animal rights group, filmed uh, secretly found evidence of unspeakable cruelty and illegal acts in eight out of nine randomly chosen British slaughterhouses. Um, right. And those numbers I provided with you with the bolt and non-bolt is, is uh, done by the European Food Safety uh, Authorities, and they found that in 2004. So mm. this is all science. This is genuine science that's been done. A lot of the scientific papers uh, actually support this view. Um, <coughs> When you go and read into it, it's actually, you know, um, better. And it's, it's sad that things like the BDA, which is the British Veterinary Association, the Daily Fail, and parties like UKIP will attack this kind of stuff with mm. no scientific evidence on their side. And they should be slapped down for it, but they're not. And that's just highly annoying. Mm. Yeah, um... Well, the, the reaction that I see is, uh, to my shame, people that for some reason I have on my Facebook, but at least it means I can keep an eye on this shit, is they link the Daily Fail story with a rant about how Muslims are taking over and they're getting preferential treatment and animal... Uh, oh, and another one, something I saw, you know, you know, um, you know animal cruelty and you know the, the, the prevention of cruelty to animals is more important than your religion. 
Yada yada. It's it's it, it somehow does just appeal to the kind of tribalism that is taking us down the the very worrying path that we've um, that we've been discussing quite a lot in London after midnight over the the, um, the past few weeks. So thank you for the for the information. I didn't know any of that. Um, if, if you would want, I would uh, link you the the one of the biggest science articles on religious slaughter. Um, uh-huh. You can maybe link it in the description bar, so everyone can go have a look at it. It's a, it's a um, piece from March of '94 by one of the um, in the U.S. by a very pr- prestige, I guess, uh, animal rights activist uh, researcher. I'll link it in. Okay. So everyone can maybe read that. Excellent. Thank you so much. And people, um, I got flack last week. Um, from a commenter because I said in the video that I was going to link uh, something in the description and then even though I put a header for it I somehow didn't link it or it didn't save I don't know if I got distracted and forgot but I uh, do co- feel free to comment if I have forgotten to link this or anything Ah, Queenie, uh, your thoughts on this subject I'm just I mean if it's supply and demand it's not the Islamification of anything it's the capitalization of something it's Mm. it's been decided by Subway that in those areas it is more profitable for them to serve halal meat instead of ham Mm. that's pretty much it I mean I don't know how there's anything more to the story than that it's like Mm. supply and demand it is profitable for Subway to serve halal meat in those areas so they're doing so because they want to make more money yeah it is funny how the daily fail can change one letter you know Muslim demand Muslim demands because those two things mean very different things (laughs) Um, if you see what I mean Uh, but but uh, this is actually, uh, looking at this, it just reminds me of the kind of alarmist stuff that, um, all the anti-Semitic stuff that's saying the Jews open the floodgates for, um, multiculturalism. Uh, I just kind of find it humorous because apparently halal meat is made largely by Jewish Americans. Not that there's any sort of connection, I just find it funny. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, the three um, largest plants are all in the U.S., and they're all run by Jewish people, mainly because a lot of the rules for uh, uh, the, the Jewish uh, traditional food eating and the uh, Muslim traditional eating come from the uh, the old part, the Old Testament, which basically both parties revere. Um, still funny that they can't uh, agree on that. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so the Tim Minchin song, We Don't Eat Pigs. You don't eat pigs. Let's all not eat pigs together. I can't quite remember how it goes. But, uh, yes. They are the case for peace. Um, so, yes. So, more uh, more fucktardery. Um, and, and another thing is the timing of this. The Daily Mail, I think, actively want people voting for UKIP. This, this seems very clear. They're not, they're not just... Um, feeding off of people's fears and paranoias, the, the timing of, of kicking up this stink in the weeks before the election. Um, and admittedly, the stupidest people will vote for UKIP because of shit like this. But we do let stupid people vote. Should we let stupid people have the vote? That should be a topic for one show. Unfortunately. Um, I mean, the thing is, um, capitalising on fears of... of, of uh, low information voters is still a very viable tactic. Mm. As sadly as it is, I mean, uh, yeah, that the Daily Mail and UKIP run hand in hand is is kind of, yeah, um, kind of obvious in the direction they go. They both go for low informed voters um, with clearly xenophobic or xenophobically sounding. Uh, things and and mm. try to frame it in a way that they don't quite sound xenophobic but really they are well i've always assumed that the daily mail do what they do to make money because they're a business headlines that make people angry uh whether it's about this that or the other people will buy it so that they can rant about it and feel angry and yada 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 um it doesn't necessarily mean that 
a paper like the Daily Mail believes all of its own shit. In fact, I've seen, I can't quote any of the top of my head, but examples of columnists whose views appear to change depending on who's paying their paycheck, uh, which means that a journalist can move around the political compass um, according to the paper. So, you know, um, there were some broadsheet um, journalists and columnists who did work for tabloids, for example. Um, but the timing of this, of its very typical Daily Mail story, but it just sort of like, you're making this kind of fuss. In fact, basically, they must at least be completely cynical, because at least think, actually, maybe this particular bullshit story could wait until after the election. But no, that they go hand in hand in this way wouldn't have occurred to me. It's like they've picked... Okay, it, it's like a, a tactical way of... Um, you know, tr actually trying to get UKIP in. So, okay, it's not just a cynical thing to sell papers. You actually believe this shit, or at least to some extent. I mean, you don't need, need essentially need uh, the reporters themselves to believe it. You just need some higher-ups, like the owner or the editor-in-chief or something to believe it. Yeah. Uh, I'd just yeah. like to remind everyone to not vote for racists, okay? <laughs> exactly. Racism's bad, people. <laughs> Racism's bad. Okay, kids. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, on that note, uh, well, appropriately enough, um, next week's uh, uh, episodes slash omnibus will be an election slash UKIP accounts special. Um, and so, um, be sure to join us, although I suppose as it'll be, rec oh, hang on, yeah, so several of the editions will actually be before the election, because, uh, oh, it's always, I see, it's always a Thursday, isn't it? Is it the 22nd it's on? It depends um, on the nation, like, we don't vote till the 25th, um, it, Oh, right, it, okay. It, the nations vote from the 22nd to the 25th, um. So it'll be somewhere between Thursday and Sunday. People vote, I think. Or is it Thursday and Monday? I, I can't remember. But it's somewhere oh, between that time. Ah, okay. So it'll all, if you're German, it'll all be before it. Because, hang on, 25th is a Sunday. Yes. Oh, you vote on Sundays. Oh, you okay. traditionally vote on Sundays, yes. Oh, okay. Well, for us, it's Thursday the 22nd. And, um, oh, okay. And so, yeah, be sure to join us then. Um, and uh, I suppose that's all there is to say. So um, it's uh, good night from Kogi. May the hamster of prosperity rest upon your head and not the head of those in you, kid. Koki, eat a Snickers. You always talk about hamsters when you're hungry. <laughs> ah, but yes, indeed, I share the message. Uh, and, and no disrespect intended to, to the to the hamster. That was just a thing that I improvised earlier when you talked about getting a Snickers. You and, don't anyway. want to insult the wrath of the hamster of prosperity, just saying. <laughs> uh, indeed. Uh, and a good night from Fratis. Maybe we can torch London to get rid of the rats. Uh, I mean, sorry, you keep support. <laughs> um, but good night, everyone. And a good night from Queenie. Oh, sorry, I was having joyful banter with my man-slave. I mean boyfriend. <laughs> um, uh, good night, everybody. And it's good night for me. This has been London After Midnight with your host, Alex. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>